is a quick guide to runners so that you understand what your knee injury is, how you can diagnose it, so that you can seek the correct advice. Because every single knee injury requires slightly different rehab exercises to do. So we're going to look at pain you feel over the front of the knee, pain you feel over the inside of the knee, as well as the outside of the knee. And then we've made treatment videos about all of these specific videos. So I'll put those links in the bottom of this, in the description of this video as well. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mareka. I'm one of the physiotherapists from sportsinjuryphysio.com, where you can get online physiotherapy assessment as well as treatment for your injuries. Have a look at the description of this video if you want the link to our website. The most common cause for pain that you feel over the inside of your knee is either a medial meniscus tear or a um, MCL strain, which stands for medial collateral ligament, or it can be bone bruising, actually. So if we look at where you feel that pain, the medial meniscus lies within the joint, so on the joint line. Now, how do you get the joint line? If you're on the sides of your kneecap and you just come down into the little dip there and you slide up and down, you'll feel, ah, there's a dip just there. And that's your joint line where it gaps at the front. So if you follow it around on the inside, that's where the pain will be when you have a medial meniscus. Now, if you've torn the, the part that's more to the back, it'll be more on the back. It'll be more to the front if it's the front bit, but it'll be somewhere around there. Then your medial collateral ligament lies across that joint line because it stops the knee from gapping on this side. When, whenever you've got a force that does that or your knee twists in, that ligament stops it from separating the joint surfaces. Now, it runs in that area, and the problem is it runs across the medial meniscus. So often these two conditions can create pain in the same area. And then the third thing is if you've got bone bruising, and that happens when you do a movement and the, the surfaces of the joint comes together and actually the, the bone bruises. So how can you tell the difference? There's, you can get some clues in how the injury happened, so what was the injury movement, but you can also pick up some clues with regards to how your knee reacts once it is injured. So the main injury movement for all three of these is when you have a twisting action with the knee where you have a sudden twist or the knee turns in or somebody knocks you. That can all cause any of these three injuries. It can cause them in isolation or to be all together there. Now, if you have a lot of swelling that comes on, it's usually a sign that something inside the joint has been injured. So then I would suspect that there may be a medial meniscus injury, or you could even injure an ACL, which is your anterior cruciate, if it was a twisting action hard enough. If there's not much swelling and the pain is very much just located actually more on the bony bits, when you press and you can find it more on the ligament, that will indicate more of just a medial collateral ligament injury. But if you go off from the, the ligament and you also get pain when you press onto the joint line, then we think the, the meniscus may also be injured a little bit. Now, problem with bone bruising is it can feel very similar to both of these. And there's no clear test that we can do in clinic to distinguish between the two. If you see a physio, they can do a test where they rotate your knee um, to check if your meniscus is happy or not. Or they can do one where they press and gap the knee and see how your ligament feels in different ranges of motion when they do that one. Now, none of these tests are 100% accurate, but if you put the history of how it happened, plus you look at the symptoms, how much swelling there is or not, um, plus you do the test, you can form a really accurate diagnosis from that. And if they're still unsure, they may send you for a scan, but scans are usually not needed. Now, the treatment for these three things all of them like you to offload it for a little bit, that you just reduce the, um, the most painful activities for them and then follow a rehab plan. But how much you've got to offload versus what exercises you do will be slightly different for them. And if you've got a severe MCL sprain, you may even need a brace for a period of time. I've made videos about each of these conditions. And for the ones that I haven't made, I think it's just the bone bruising I haven't made one for. Um, I will make, they are planned to be made in the next few months. So if you're watching this video, I've put those links in the bottom of the description of this video if you want detailed explanation of how you treat medial meniscus, 
as well as MCL, and the bone bruising will be added as soon as I make it. Looking at the front of the knee, the most common injuries runners get that gives you pain over the front of the knee is either patellofemoral pain syndrome, which is basically your kneecap that's hurting, or patella tendinopathy or tendinitis, which is the tendon that attaches the kneecap um, or that runs from the kneecap to the shin bone. Or you can get fat pad impingement, which is the fat pad underneath the tendon. So let me go. And of course, then also, if you tore on your medial meniscus more to the front, it can give you pain in this area. Lateral meniscus can give you pain in that area. But um, And then you can also get quadriceps tendinopathy or tendinitis, which is at the top of the kneecap. So let's run through these areas that you know what you're pressing on. So the first thing to locate is your kneecap, which is this little bone that you can feel moving when you move your knee. So if we get that little bone, and if you think of your pain, and you can't really tell me that you can put a finger on it, that it just feels like an achiness over the front of the knee, it feels quite deep inside, and you didn't have any severe twisting injury or anything to it, it just became painful over time then it's likely gonna be the kneecap. Because with a kneecap, no matter how much you try to press for something that hurts, you often can't really feel something that correlates with your pain. So if it's quite a diffuse pain, can't put a finger on it, you're starting to suspect the kneecap. Um, if you take the top edge of the kneecap and you come off that, just in this area, you press around there and you can find the painful spot there, it may mean that it's the quadriceps tendon. So if you tense your thigh muscle, the quadriceps is this um, group of four muscles. Now I've got too much fat there. If you're a nice skinny bloke, because the blokes never have so much fat, you can usually see the muscles end and you can see a tendon there. And that this is the area where you get pain when you've got quadriceps tendinopathy. So again, if you go to the kneecap and you come down and you find the bottom tip of it, and you go side to side there, you'll find that there's a cylindric thing that's quite hard. And as you go down, you can feel it all the way down. That's your thick patella tendon. And if you have pain along the patella tendon on the tendon itself, often where it attaches to the kneecap, that usually indicates a patella tendinopathy. But now you also have a fat pad just under that tendon, which has lots of little nerve endings and if that pinches it can be super super painful and it can sometimes mimic the pain that it gets confusing is it my kneecap that's sore is it my tendon that's sore because the pain's kind of in the same area but it's usually then when you press on it it's more when you go behind the tendon and press next to the tendon or in those areas that you feel it that it's more likely going to be the fat pad also some different things that you can use to distinguish between them is that the, well, the kneecap messes things up because it can mimic a lot of the stuff. So for both the kneecap as well as the, um, the, patella, te the patella tendon and the quadriceps tendon, anything where you kneel or you go downhill is usually more painful for them. The fat pad doesn't like full knee extension. So if your knee hurts most when you straighten it out or when you stand with it pushed back like that, it's more likely going to be with a fat pad and not one of the other three. But there are several different tests that your physio will perform in clinic that will help them decide which one of these three it is. But going on the area where you feel the pain can already tell you a lot. Now, if you want to know about the treatment of any of these, I've made videos about each one of them as well. And again, the ones that I haven't made videos yet about, uh, they're on the list to make in the next couple of months. So keep checking the, the description of this video. I'll put links to all of them there for you. If we look at the outer side of the knee, there are again three things that mainly causes pain for runners in this area. And the first one is actually also a lateral meniscus tear. Now lateral meniscus tears are not nearly as common as medial meniscus tears. It usually takes impact that something hits you or you, you step into a hole with your, with your leg to cause that to become painful. Um, then we've got the IT band, IT band running across there and you get IT band syndrome that can cause pain over this area. And you can also strain your ligament, the LCL, lateral collateral ligament that holds this side of the joint together. But again, it's not nearly as common an injury as straining the MCL um, uh, on the inside of the, of the leg. 
So if I had to choose one, especially if your pain came on slowly over time as you were training, it's much more likely that it's going to be your ITB that's causing trouble. Um, if the pain happened suddenly, that it was in a sudden step, it's going to be that you likely may have torn something on the side, either your lateral collateral ligament or your um, lateral meniscus. So where do you find these things? The, again, we want to find the joint line for the meniscus. So you feel until you feel, ah, there's a little dent in there that I can put my finger. You can see how the dent goes in there. That's my joint line. So if your knee's straight, it's not easy to find. If the knee's bent, you can find the joint line really easy, that gap. And you just follow it around. That's the joint line that comes to this corner of the knee. Um, if it's not painful there, it doesn't rule out a meniscus tear. But if the pain is higher up or lower down, that then likely means it's not going to be a meniscus tear. Your lateral, lateral ligament runs across that joint line. So you want to find the knobbly bits on the side of your, of your knee and feel there. If it's an LCL tear, you will feel, find pain on that ligament. And then the IT band, if the IT band is the culprit, your pain will also be in this area, but you will also likely feel quite a bit of tightness up into your leg. Um, and it can be that the IT band is, is painful under the joint line, so just there, or it can be on there, or it can be just most commonly just in this area above the joint line that you feel the IT band pain. Again, your physio in the clinic will perform tests, rotation tests to check for the meniscus, gapping tests to, to check for the um, lateral collateral ligament, and there's a test for the IT band where you kind of press on it and repetitively bend and straighten the leg to check if it's the IT band. Um, made videos about all of those. Have a look in the description of this one if you want links to it. I forgot something. You can also get bone bruising on the outside of the knee because again, the joint surfaces, if you do a twisting movement, can squash the, um, the bones together and that can cause it to bruise in that area. So that's another cause that you may have from that. Now, you may be thinking that <clears throat> my knee pain is not really at the front. It's not really on the side. It feels more like it's the whole knee that's angry with me when I finish a run. If that's the case, that's actually quite common and the most a um, common reason for why that happens is that you are likely overdoing your running. So you're either new to running and you are trying to do too many runs in a week or increasing it too quickly and your knees are just going, oh, we haven't had time to adapt to all of this. And you'll likely benefit from some strength training and just bring your running volume down a bit. But you may also want to look at what shoes you wear and, and things like that because that can be really useful. But if you're an experienced runner and you're thinking, but I'm experiencing that achy knee feeling and I've been running for ages. Again, it may be that you're actually increasing your mileage too quickly or you've recently changed to running in a different terrain or you've had a break from training and you've come back quite quickly or your shoes are just old and you really need to look at getting them replaced. But if you feel that all of that is not the issue, then you may have to look into strength training because when we run, our muscles are meant to absorb most of the force when we run. And if they aren't doing their job properly, the joint will take more strain. So you can offload your knees by actually making sure that your glutes are strong, your thighs are strong, your calves are strong, and the whole kinetic chain is doing the job that it should be doing. Brilliant. Let me know if you've got any questions. And remember, if you need more help with an injury, you're welcome to consult one of us via video call. The link to the website is in the description of this video. Take care.